Hello and welcome to a CS6 tutorial on how to do color correction. Don't worry, this applies in any program and we're actually using a lot of magic bullet and natural color corrections that you can apply and just understand the concepts that we use for this. So we're going to start out on a little beach sample and let's just play through this, show you what we're working with. Okay, so you want to be able to look at your piece and get an idea what what do you want to draw attention to? Do we want the water to be more blue? Do we want to have a soft dreamy focus? And you can do all of this over in the effects area. And if your screen doesn't look like mine, go to window, go to workspace, and click on editing. If it still doesn't look like mine, after you click on editing, come back here and click on reset current workspace. Once you do that, it's going to ask if you're sure, choose yes, and then it realigns it just as so. Okay, so if you click on the effects area and go to video effects, you have a whole area here called color correction. And in the drop down of that, one of the first things that I apply to my videos is brightness and contrast. So I'll drag this out here and sit it on top. And then I'll take my scroll bar and slide into that. And you can see a very slight green line. That means it has an effect applied to it. Now up here in the upper left, you can click on effect controls. And if you don't see that as an option, go to your window and go down to effect controls. As you see, they have shortcuts. Shift 5 opens that up as well. So anything that you take and drag onto here, it's going to show up in the effects controls over here. Notice broadcast colors isn't in there right now, but once we drag it in and sit it in there, now you get the broadcast colors for this clip. If you have multiple clips that you want to be adding effects to, no matter what clip you're clicked on, that's what pops up over here. So even though my cursor is on top of this, my timeline marker, I need to actually be clicking on that clip to get access to this. This works very similar to Photoshop, so if you're familiar with the drop downs, layering, and the little effects button found in Photoshop, you'll, you'll become very familiar with this quickly. So if I click off broadcast colors here, it disables and enables that effect. When you apply effects, you want to keep in mind that it does affect your RAM. This is a RAM preview piece here, letting you know if it's saved to hard drive, if it's in your RAM yet. And the more effects you apply, the more it does bog down your computer. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we don't want broadcast colors. We're going to take that off. And like I said, one of the first things I like is brightness and contrast. Now, there's a few different ways you can change this. You can hit the drop down arrow here and you can go up and down with this slider. And you can also click on this and type in a value and press enter. Or you can click here and drag it whichever direction you want. Now this is an area that there is no right or wrong. It's really what you want it to look like. And I would suggest you go with some standards to start out with. Look what other uh, look what other editors do and just take their ideas. So there isn't very much focus on the water here and I really feel like the girls and the lighting on their back is what a lot of the focus is coming to. So and I really like the lighting already on this. There's not too much I don't want to do to this. This is really only used to show you guys how to use this. So we go to the brightness and we can increase this here and I do think that gives it a little bit more of a pop to increase that. And when you combine brightness and contrast at the same time, the contrast actually counterbalances the brightness. So as you see, when I increase the contrast, it loses that bright feel that I added before. And you might wash out a few items. Uh, you can see the water, if I go up too high, it starts to get washed out completely. And you might actually want that look. Let's go back and play it again with that effect. You can just see a crazy amount of contrast applied there. So let's go back and let's drop this down. Let's take our contrast up to about 12. I'm shooting on this one in particular. I think this was a Canon 5D. And most of the DSLRs with Canon in the 2010 to 2013 era, they all have a similar color profile to them. So let's play that again. And I put the contrast on 16, brightness on 7, and play that through that one more time. Of 
Cool, really nice pop to that. So look at it with it turned off, turned on. It really does make a, a nice difference in your footage, that much alone. Now, like I said, I shoot in what I call a flat profile. So on your camera, you have it set up so you can change the different profiles on there. And you can't tell too much that this is flat, even with the effects turned off, it still looks pretty good. But with the effect turned on, it looks just phenomenal. So if we look over on this other video that I have, let's go over even further. If you look on this video, you'll notice I did apply a flat profile here. And the flat profile just adds a lot of gray lines in there. It just tries to muddle down all the colors so that you can add in the color later. And uh, this did have a somewhat blue sky here. The beach, the, the ocean was a little bit blue. The sand is obviously brown. He has a blue shirt on, gray pants, and, and then we have skin tones. So when you watch this, you want to, again, you want to look at it from the beginning and say, what do I want to do with my footage? Do I want it to just have more brightness and contrast so that this pops a little bit more? Do I want to take that ocean that's rolling in in the back? And do I want to make that have a nice blue um, Bahama feel to it? Or, 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 you know, what do I want? And after you figure out what you want, that's where we apply the effect. So let's go in and take the brightness and contrast and put on there. And when you add more contrast in here, you'll see that it really defines the colors a lot more. And the problem with that, let's turn it off, you'll see that we lose our beach in doing that. And it, it comes in and it blends all the way into his shirt. Now, I wouldn't recommend a white shirt in front of an ocean. I don't think I'm going to do that, that color again. But um, you can play around here. You can lower your brightness on this one and increase your contrast. And that'll give you a nice look that you might like. Oh, way too much. And look at the difference between it turned on and off. It's not that big of a difference, but it does get rid of that flat profile look. But that's not what we're going to do with this one. Like I said, we're going to be using Magic Bullet. And if you really don't want to become a color correction professional and you just want to hurry up and slap something on and not worry about it, I really recommend getting the Magic Bullet plugins. They're incredible. So in the effects, we're in the color correction that comes with CS6. We're going to minimize that. And if you look down further, I've installed Magic Bullet and I have Magic Bullet looks. If you go down into the drop down out of that, you have the looks effect. You drag that out onto your footage and it also shows up over here. And now it has an edit button. So clicking the edit button opens up the Magic Bullet program. And it also gives you a little sample of your footage. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You have the tools down on the lower right and you can add your own effects in. You can throw in some saturation over here. Uh, it has a power button that you can turn it on and off. And then your controls to actually change that are in the upper right but I don't recommend doing that either. Let's go ahead and delete that back out. What I recommend doing is going to the lower left and to the looks area. Like I said, you just want something really quick and you don't want it to worry about stuff too much. You just want it to work on its own. So look at what happens when we click on the blockbuster. Immediately, it gives it that really cool look and you're gonna feel like you're an awesome editor when you really didn't do anything. And each, each style might have something different with it. So maybe we want this vignette to, to come out even wider on this. So you can click on the vignette and you can change the color of it on here. You can also, it's pretty self-explanatory if you understand uh, what a radius is. Um, and that's what I love about any kind of photo editing, video editing program. There is no wrong, just click on it, drag it around, see what it does. And you'll see, oh, well this radius makes the vignette smaller or bigger and I'm dragging left and right as I clicked on that. You can also come out here after you click on radius or aspect, you can click on the controls and change it here as well. So since he's over here on the right, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag the entire vignette over towards him. And then I'm gonna expand it so it takes up the entire screen. And then if you click away from it, click away from your vignette down here, it gets rid of that for you and you can see what it looks like. If you want to see what it looks like before, control Z back to that. And control shift Z 
to apply it again. So control Z, control shift C. Really cool effect that you can do in literally a matter of seconds with the magic book, with the magic bullet plugins. And you can also go through up here and hit the play button and it just scrolls through all the different looks that are possible. And you can, if you aren't a very good designer, you can't visualize in your head, just hit this play button and see what it looks like. And then we can stop that. You can go down to the looks and you can pick one from in here. And when you scroll down and let your cursor stop, all the plugins effects load and you can get a better idea of what it's gonna look like once it's applied to him. So my entire purpose was this shoot. I wanted to look old school. I wanted to have that grungy 1950s in the gym look. Even though we're on the beach, we're with somebody in 2013 with HD footage. I wanted to have this nice old school, old fashioned, and uh, you know, I just want the video to last a long time. So what I applied to it was more of a look like this. And it has a nice old school feel to it. You feel, you just feel like you know the guy already just by looking at that. And after we do that, you can come down here to the different areas. And maybe I want some more contrast. So I can bump up the contrast, take it down if you feel like it added too much. And also, as you're dragging here, it's only taking a sample image. As soon as you let go, it loads in the full refined image there. Okay, and once you hit finish, it's going to apply that effect. And now you can see it on top of your footage. And now on the looks effect over here, it has each one individually played out so you can understand what effects you have applied. And we can go back into the edit time. This is non-destructive and anytime you want to I can turn off just the saturation turn off just the contrast you can click on each one and come back and edit what it's applying you can also go to the tools and bring in three-way color in here you know and, and just change that to your liking do whatever you want really and but I really recommend when you first start learning this, don't use don't use any of the tools and don't add anything. Simply come to the looks, use the stock looks that are here. Now, if you're a wedding photographer, wedding videographer, if you get hired for a very small gig, then clients are never going to know that you're just using a template coming in here, clicking on one of the 60 little templates that they have. However, if you get more high end work, you will want to learn how to use the auto shoulder make your own curves, your own saturation. Then after that, when we choose finish, I'm also gonna turn back on my brightness and contrast here. And I'm gonna play around with that as well. And that's not the only thing you can do. We can also change the colors. So, so far you've learned very basic. If you don't have any effects at all, we learned how to apply nice brightness and contrast onto this footage. We'll click on it and you can see that turned off and on. Very nice. Okay, and then over here on this footage, we learned how to give it a nice old school grunge look just using a template with magic bullet looks. And you can also play through your footage. You can now see this has a red bar. That means none of that is loaded into the RAM. And with a slower computer, these, these looks that you add for magic bullet, they do slow it down quite a bit. So if you're just trying to find your place marker in your footage, you might want to turn that off, play through it, find what you want to do, stop there and then turn it back on. Uh, you can even go through your entire editing without these turned on. Once you find your look and see what you like, you don't really need it turned on the rest of the way. On a faster computer, you can just keep that turned on the whole time. It does add maybe 10 to 20% lag onto your system. Mine lags a little bit really because I'm screen recording at the same time as I'm doing this. But I really like that look. That's what I was going for when I filmed this. I might even add um, some distortion to it, uh, add some grain in there. And if you, you know, they have a lot of different things in here. And if you want to just find something really quick, if I want to add noise, I just type in noise up here and look at that. There we have noise and I can drag that out, put it on top of it. And of amount of noise, you can see it adding in the grid up there. 
and I'm going to play it again. Now you can see the noise that it added to that. Now that's just very generic noise. Magic Bullet does have its own noise that you can add. So say I don't want this noise, I want to click on it and delete. And then let's uh, just get rid of our search here so we can see everything. Go back into video effects. So all of these come with Magic Bullet and the Magic Bullet Misfire has some really cool noise and grain effects. When you look at the drops down in here, they're pl pretty self-explanatory. But I'm going to add in some micro scratches to this. And I don't know if you can see that, but they have nice lines coming down the footage. And when we play it, it just gives it a little bit of a weathered look that goes along with this red tint that we added to it earlier with our looks. And the cool thing about those, they are dynamic. They do move with your footage. So let's take that one off, the micro scratches. Let's add on some dust. And over here you can change how much amount you have, the opacity of it. And some of them work with footage and some of them just, just don't work at all. So you have to play around with it, see what you like. Okay, so now you know how to do that. Uh, so now let's go over to a complete different piece of footage and let's learn how to add color correction. So you see this piece over here has some yellows in it and I would prefer that to be more of a white color. The problem is this is white and by changing this over to white uh, we might have some issues if we just change the white balance. So this is where Magic Bullet Colorista comes in. If you don't have any type of color correction at all CS6 does come with its own color correction settings in here and you can change color, change to color, channel mixer and what I prefer if you don't want to do very much is the fast color corrector. So let's apply that to this footage and it gives you a nice big wheel that way you don't have to understand all the hues and gains and balances all of that. You can simply use this little uh, arrow that's going to come out here. So there's two different parts, this guy in here and this guy out here. That's how it controls the whole thing, okay? And you can see just by moving this closer to the oranges, it makes it a lot warmer. If I want to make it a lot cooler, I go over towards the blues. And then I could take this guy all the way down and that changes my base color or all the way out. Now, if you want to be more technical with that, instead of just sliding this stuff all around to see what happens, I recommend coming down and clicking on a lot of these settings. So your black level, this is setting more of your white balance, your black balance, your white balance, your gray balance. So you can click here and you can choose what color you want to be black. And after you click that, it's going to take that color red and make it the darkest possible. But most likely you're going to want to click on, let's actually revert that so we can see our image better. You're going to want to click on the eyedropper and go into something that's actually black on your screen and click on it. And it makes that black. And then you're going to want to click on the eyedropper for the white. Find something that's actually white on your screen. Try to find the whitest possible. Click on that. And now we're getting a lot closer to a natural white balance. You might not want a natural white balance with your footage, but this is how you get good white balance is with those two. You can also change these manually. You can see the input level changed over here. Once I change that on black, you can change that yourself. Now keep in mind, there are people that spend years becoming professional color correctors. So I know even this, they call it the, what was it again? Fast color corrector. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, there's so much in here. Yeah, your color correcting should be 20% of all of your work that you do with your footage. It is a lot. It takes a lot of time to learn this and a lot of patience. Okay, so I'm not going to go over too much more of this. Um, we have another tutorial on this color corrector overall, but um, Magic Bullet comes with its own color corrector that I like a lot better than the past color corrector. So let's click here, let's delete it, and let's just undo that so you can see the difference. Look at the colors here, and now look at the colors. This is the straight stock footage, and this is where their effect applied. You can see it really gives a, 
a more natural look once we have that effect applied. So let's take that fast color corrector out. And now, instead of color correction, we have the magic bullet colorista. And I have colorista too, and I'm gonna apply that to the footage. And in my opinion, this is just a little bit more user-friendly. And it also has quite a bit of dynamics to it. So you can choose your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And you can change those all around wherever you want. Nice, huh? So what I did with that is I clicked on it and then I dragged my cursor up or down. And you don't want to just focus on one piece of your footage. You want to scroll over somewhere else, see what it's like. And the reason I'm changing that highlight is this right here is uh, a highlight. So by changing this piece of the footage, it's actually removing or adding that back color in. Uh, Premiere is pretty smart and you can tell that this is a shadow and these are midtones. It's in the mid. The mid means that it's not highlighted. It's not crazy bright like this, but it's also not really dark like a shadow. It's just kind of in the middle. So this is in the middle. His face is in the middle. His shirt's in the middle. Those are what we call midtones. And the program's not going to pick up all the midtones. It's going to pick up the midtones that are more on a dark side. So you can kind of see a shadow there. You can kind of see a shadow here. Uh, those are really the midtones. Kind of see a shadow back there. So by changing these, you see it's really only changing uh, the front of his face, the front of his biceps. So I'm going to undo that. And then the shadows, that's obviously going to take the shadows. This is nice because we have trees in here. You can actually see the shadows getting uh, darker or brighter just based on this little shadow area. Okay, but like I said, we want to fix this blown out area here, how it's all yellow. So that is the highlight area. And you can choose highlight recovery and just really ramp up your recovery. Or you can go down further and you can mix things. So we have the secondary, the master, and some different options as far as, you know, just flipping the image around. Or show the skin tones. That way, when you, this gives you like a little grid that helps you understand what the colors of the skin should be. Okay, so we are going to be fixing this in here. And we're going to be changing up our mix a little bit. So with that mix, I don't want that yellow over there. So I grab the yellow and I tell it, you're not going to be yellow anymore. You're going to be a different color. I just don't want all that yellow. The reason this is so yellow, I had a yellow reflector back here, a golden reflector, aiming up at him because he was in the shade and I needed his face to be brighter. But now the problem is I should have used a silver reflector. Now he's all golden. So I take this and I need to move it to a, a more natural color. Look at how nice that's looking already. And you don't want to pull it too far away from what it already was because, you know, we don't want it to look cartoonish. So unfortunately, you know, it's it's 90% on the on the cinematographer. Now, if I added a lot of color profiles in here, this is just a little Canon 5D. If I had a nice red epic, there would be a lot more color saved in this, and I could actually pull out some reds that are in there, pull out blues. Everything that shines color, it has every color of the color spectrum saved inside of it. And when you see something nice, bright white, I, it's actually every color in the spectrum getting reflected back at you. So when you see white, don't get scared and think, oh, I can't do anything with that you can usually pull colors out of that uh, especially like this tree how it has a gray grays are every color combined um, whenever something gets completely blown out white that means that the camera lost its information it can't really do anything with it same thing with completely black it just says that's pure black it's no color at all and it says oh well this is every color 
but when you have that in the middle that's when you can play around and work with it we can have green trees pink trees whatever we really want so here when it's yellow yeah that's a problem but we still can fix that over here and uh, I really like reds for skin so that's why I'm going up towards the red and then I just want to move around in here and see what that looks like yeah I think that's a lot more natural let's uh, turn that off so you can see the difference nice huh I like it now also notice I changed I changed the yellows everywhere. It doesn't just change the yellow right there on the back of his arm. So let's turn it off and look over here and just try to visualize the yellows. Grass has yellow in it. This dirt over here, little clumps of dead grass or whatever, it's supposed to be yellow. And when I turn on this, it gives it more of a red tone to it uh, because I took that piece there and I slid it up towards the oranges, towards the reds. So just keep in mind it is going to affect your other footage as well but in this situation I really don't think people are even looking over here and this still looks looks natural who cares if you have red grass if you weren't even here whenever I was editing it I don't think you would even notice so now we have that on there and one of the nice reasons that you need to do this is I have actually two different cameras here this is one camera on the exact same angle and this is the other camera so we actually want to try to even up their colors so that they go and mix very well together so you can pan back and forth between one and the other. And again, I have the exact same yellow reflector, but I love this tone on him. That looks a lot better than this one over here did. And even after I fix it, um, that was very minor what I did, but it does make a difference. And I really just recommend to come into here and play around a lot, understand how the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights work. After you understand how they work, then you can get creative and as long as you don't have anything blown out like these whites or pitch blacks, then feel comfortable and have confidence knowing you can change that color. You can also get even more manipulative with it and do what's called rotoscoping and come in and just highlight out just the arm and go frame by frame watch his arm motion and only changing the color correction there. I don't recommend that for a small fitness video or wedding videography, but uh, if you're getting into the movies, that's definitely something that you'll see in literally every film. I hope this helped you get started in color correction and log on to our site to find more tutorials.